Hi crafty friends, it's Audra Monk, the crafty yogi, and I'm here in the crafty corner today to show you how to make the um, cityscape at sunset. Here's my card using the waterfront stamp set. Okay, so it's super fun. See that card? And then check out this stamp set. Do you see any cities in here? Any buildings? I don't either. It's really cool. I wish I would have, I'm always wishing that I thought up the ideas, but I can run with someone's idea. Oh, shoot. Somebody, Jolie, I think J-O-L-L-E-Y, had posted a card, kind of similar, kind of different, but um, with the whole idea of using the piece from the waterfront. It's this piece. Let me move that out of the way. It's this long piece. It's like your land piece to make a city. And I went and looked at her blog, and her card was beautiful. But as far as I could find, I could not find a video on how to make it. So it took me quite a few tries. Um, and I and I don't even think there was descriptions. Sorry, but so I was like, okay, I can figure this out. So I did, and I'm excited to share it with you today. So. In my exploration for this waterfront class I have coming up, or if you purchase the waterfront stamp from, stamp set slash class from me, these videos are here. And I'm then going to share them with everybody because I think everybody needs to know and we should have fun with it. So through my learning, I learned that it's really good when making um, a landscape card or an image card like this. It's really good to have a picture. So I went to Pinterest, um, as suggested by someone for one of the other cards I'm going to make, and I found a picture. Okay, here is a super, super good clue. Um, I took a screenshot of this, and then I had saved it on my Pinterest, and right before I was going to make this video, I wanted to go print it out. It wasn't in my Pinterest anymore. I don't know where it went, and I was freaking out, but then I remembered I had taken a screenshot of this one. So I'm just saying, maybe print it out or take a screenshot too, because I don't know why it disappeared, but I could not find it. Okay, so that's an aside. So I got this picture. Um, this is the New York City skyline. And I wanted this whole sunset kind of deal. And I really like this one. And I actually can't tell you who it's from because it wasn't on Pinterest anymore. But anyway, so find a picture that you like. It, um, whether you took it or someone else took it, find a picture to work with. And that's what we're going to do. So this card has two steps. Step one is we're going to make the background. And step two is we're going to make the city. So if you're learning how to make a background, fast forward, find the city part and do that. Or vice versa. Or I'd be super happy if you watched the whole thing. So let's get started. Okay, so I have my picture. I'm going to move my card out to keep it safe. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's hope I have all the supplies. Because, oh good. Because I got them out. I did. So you're going to need a piece of watercolor paper. And this is cut to... How do you say that? Three and one, two, three, four, five, six, three and seven eighths by four and sorry, two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So basically it's three by four, but I took the eighth inch off because then you need a black piece or whatever color you decide to mat it with at three by four. And that's kind of what I went with in this class just to keep my mind straight. See, it's a little tiny mat. If you want a bigger mat, do you know, make it a little bigger. So we have beautiful watercolor paper. You really need that for this. Okay, so get your watercolor piece. Get some paper towels. Hopefully I have enough and I don't get my surface wet. And get, I think this is an e-block. And clean, make sure it's super clean. I washed it with soap and water. I've got a couple stains um, from the archival ink, but that won't come off. But you want it smooth and clean. Okay, and then you need markers. So I looked, can you see the picture? I'll put the picture here. Oops, hold on. There we go. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so I looked at my picture and I saw yellow. And so I went with crushed curry. I saw an orangey color. So I went with a Calypso coral. And then I saw some pink. And I decided to go with berry burst. And uh, then two purples, a darker purple and a lighter purple. And I have fresh fig and perfect plum. Okay, so you could use less or you could use more. Um, it's representative. I am not an expert. I am totally just kind of having fun and making this stuff up. And then you'll need a spritzer. Okay, for step one, you need an e-block, some paper towels, your watercolor paper, 
oh, sorry, your aqua painter. Okay, so it does, it's a little supply of, or a paintbrush and some water. Um, what could replace a spritzer? Nothing replaces it. You need a spritzer. Okay, and some markers. And these are Stampin' Write markers. You don't want your blends or Sharpies or something permanent because it's right on your block. That might not go well. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to give you. Okay, if you want it to look like this. See how the yellow's here and then it goes this way? You have to color in reverse. When I color this one, I did not color in reverse. So you see that the yellow is here. Um, on this side. So I'm going to attempt to color in reverse. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to start with yellow. And I like to use the, especially in this, the marker marker side. Um, so I'm just going to give, I see yellow here. So I'm going to do it in reverse and I'm just going to give some yellow and let it come across. Can you see? Okay. I'm just checking that you could see it because I do like to just not have to edit these videos. I like you to see what real crafting is. So I have yellow. Okay, and you don't have to press hard. And then I see some Calypso Coral. And where do I see it? I see more on the opposite side of the yellow. So that's what I'm going to do. I hope I can do this in reverse. If not, will it matter? No. I mean, is like someone going to come say, oh, you're, the sun comes in from that direction. I mean, maybe a New York expert, but um, yeah, no. Okay, so I've got my Calypso Coral. All right, next, I'm going to go... I'm going to go with my pinkish color. Okay, and I'm going to do just a little. On my other sample, I did a lot. And I'm now when I'm looking at this picture printed out, maybe on my phone, it may have looked different. So um, I saw a lot of pink, so that's why. But then look at the bottom. I think we're going to do purple there. Okay, so now my purples. I'm going to go my lighter purple, which is my plum. Looking for the marker side. Okay, and I'm going to give it a lot here. My yellow okay so lighter got it it's hard to do this in opposites okay and then I'm gonna give some along this place that's gonna be my horizon no that what I don't know if it's your horizon my shoreline how about that okay and then my darker purple and you know if you know better and you can do this quicker you go right ahead but this is what worked for me and so I color these on and then I want lots and lots of purple in this corner Okay, so you color it all on your block. All right, let me move all my markers out of the way because I tend to get the stuff like in the way. Okay, next, I need to spritz it. Um, I'm gonna turn away from the, I don't wanna wet my surface. So I always say spritz over a carpet. You hold the um, block and then very key, look at your spritzer and find the part where the spritzing is coming out and make sure that's pointed at your block because sometimes you spray yourself. Just saying. Okay, so I'm going to take it over here and I'm going to spritz it. And I'm going to spritz this one kind of a lot. You heard that? Four or five. And try not to tip it so the colors don't run. Okay, where's my piece of paper? I don't know why this has one little black speck on it. So I'm going to use the other side. I don't think it matters. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to look at where I want my shoreline and I'm just going to push it down. And I'm going to give it a little push, a little squish, a little squish. Okay, and then I'm going to lift up. Look at that. I managed to take the juicy part to the side. Okay, so put your block aside. You'll want to clean that up later. I'm just going to put it on the floor and hope I don't trip over it. Okay, I have this little extra too much over here. I'm going to dab that off. Okay, because I don't want that in my picture. I'm going to take this piece. Oh, I'm so happy with that. It's so pretty. Okay, so we are done with this for right now. Actually, I'm going to keep it there because I'll talk to you. But Okay, so I'm going to dab it off. And then, depending on how wet it is, I'm going to give it a quick dry. You could dry it with your heat tool. I like to use um, just one. Or you could let it dry if you're doing a bunch of them. So I'm going to dry it. And hopefully it doesn't take too long because I didn't do any magic of uh, TV videos and, and have one pre-ready for you this time. Kind of wanted you to feel a real time how, so this card does take a little while. I'm teaching this in a class tomorrow, um, so I'm hoping it goes well. And in this case, since I'm doing watercolor, it doesn't have to be totally dry. Oh, it's so pretty. So you can make all kinds of colors or backgrounds this way. Okay, and I think I'm good. All right, so heat tool out of the way. You could use a hair dryer on low too. Okay, next, I need a city line. I need something to tell me what it looks like. So 
I'm ready. Okay, so step two, stamping. Oh, let's switch this. We are going to stamp this. I have a silicone mat um, and then a piece of grid paper cut down. You could, I'd say just give something with a little padding. You could use your foam or you could do a couple pieces of grid paper. You might even be able to do the paper towel with grid paper on top. So have a surface. Next, you need a black marker, some memento ink, and in the course of True Confessions, I did this with archival ink because I didn't know. I didn't see directions or I didn't notice what kind of ink um, the person I looked at had used. Well, you know what? You can't watercolor that archival ink, so mine is just, it's just where it is. Um, and then you'll need a gel pen. We used to sell these. Oh, I have the wrong marker. Okay, sorry. I'm just looking at my supplies. We used to sell these gel pens. These are Signa, Signo brand. Um, I'm, I didn't look, but I bet you I buy everything on Amazon. If Stampin' Up, I buy Stampin' Up first. It's the best. Seriously, don't do it. Don't buy a year adhesive. Don't buy your ink. Buy it from Stampin' Up. Ours is the best. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but get a gel pen. Okay. All right, so am I ready? I'm ready. So I have my paper and I have my ink. And from the Waterfront stamp set, I have on a block this uh, little landscape piece. It looks just like you took a paintbrush and, and you drew a line. Okay, so first I need to make uh, the base of my landscape at the river. I'm going to ink this up. And then I'm going to place it here because I want that yellow above. And I'm going to push it down. Okay, and then I'm going to do it all the way across because, you know, the stamp is only so long. And I don't want it to look the same, so I'm going to flip it over and push it on here. Okay, and then your aqua painter. In this case, I'm not using a ton of water, so make sure that it's wet. And then just give a little, a little go. And I should have probably done this up higher because I'm now looking at my sample, but it's okay. It'll work. It won't matter. The person I'm sending it to will not know. So I'm going to give my landscape a little... A little go. Okay. Next, it's all about making this uh, little city scene. Oh, ha, ha, it, it's almost all about making your city scene. Oh my gosh. You need some post-its. Okay. And again, I this is what I came up with. I wasn't sure how to do it. So I'm going to put the post-its across the bottom because I have this big long line, right? I want buildings. I don't want a big long line. Okay. So post-its on there. All right, get your building. So I'm going to start with this. I don't know if it's the, um, oh, what do you call that? Mm, Trade Center? No. Mm, I don't know. It's in New York. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. So there's two ends to this. One has a little notch out and one is thicker. You can use either. I'm going to use the one with the notch out and I'm going to make this building tall. So since I did my, uh, my land lower, I'm going to make my buildings a little taller. So this one's going to be tall and I want it a little bit to the right. And there we go. So I'm going to stamp it on there. There we go. Okay. Next, you're just going to stamp buildings. So I'm going to go and do the tall, like the tops of the buildings first. I see one over here a little to the right. I'm going to do that one. And then I see a wider one a little bit Oh, it's a little higher actually, a little higher. So I'm gonna go there. Okay, now I'm going back to my, my tall one and I see a little one, you know, a little bit over. And then next to it is another one, a teeny bit taller. And you're just gonna go about this business and do this. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not saying on the card what city it is. Um, it's just a cityscape. And so I just want some different heights of buildings. Flip it over because they're all starting to look the same, but I'm going to show you how to take care of that. And then there's kind of a cluster where they're all together. I'm going to even put one more here. Okay, so next, get my aqua painter again. Gently make sure it's wet, and I'm going to give them a little color. That will even up the color. This will blend in that line. Some of them I'm going to keep it. Some of them I'm going to go. Okay, so we're going to do that. 
And you don't want a lot of water unless you really, really like that really soft watercolor look. I kind of want mine to look have a little definition. Okay, again, not too much. All right, now I'm going to fill in by having it more stamped off. So stamp it off on your grid paper and give the street behind buildings because I don't think in New York City there's very much like totally open, you know, space. And they can be high, they can be low. Oh, I didn't stamp that one off, did I? And I think you just kind of stamp at it. I think this kind of stamp, uh, you don't have to be super exact. But look at that. I have like the, the street back. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, next. I want to give this that little point. So take your Stampin' Right marker. I'm using the pointy tip. And I'm just going to draw a line. Yep, draw a line up there. Okay. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of water because I want it to blend in a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So now, I'm just feeling, okay, so it's not too wet. I'm going to take this off because I do want the little, um, ha, that's funny. You know what? There's no shadows in this picture. They don't have shadows in the water. But I'm trying to decide if I need shadows. I think I want a little bit. So I'm going to flip this over. Put my post-it here so I don't mess up the ones I've made. Oh, hold your horses. That wouldn't really work because would I know where the buildings were? No, I would not know. So put it up a little bit higher. And then flip my stamp over and give it a little shadow. I'm going to stamp. That's the one I wanted dark. And then I'm going to stamp these off. And so I'm giving that. Oops. Giving that uh, shadow in the water kind of deal. It may have been the one that I saw. Maybe it was Kim Jolie. That might be her name. I wish I would have wrote it down for you. Um, but I got to carry on here. So I'm going to stamp a little bit in the water. And then I'm going to give them a little bit of softness. Just a little. So you'll find out if you start making these waterfront cards that... I'm going to color that in, that they all look different. Even when you think you're making the same card, at least for me, they look different. Okay. Memento ink is done. I think the watercolor is done. Let's take this off. Oh, it is kind of cute. Okay, so next, the little lights. And that's, let me feel the top. Okay, so that's where your um, gel pen comes in. So I'm going to give a little light right up here. Did I pick the wrong gel pen? I might have. I have two, and one I think is mostly, ah, I did pick the wrong one. One is mostly dried up, but I keep thinking, oh, if I, I could get some out of it. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to put the lights on here. And you can do little dashes, or you can do little dots. It's, you know, so I'm going to pretend some people stayed late for work in the office here. Okay, and then you're going to want to do that in a couple of your other buildings. It's up to you how many, you know, lights you want to do. Let me look at this video. Ooh, 18 minutes. Okay. Let's see if we can finish it up. And some more. They can be circles. They can be squares. They can be weird shapes. It's okay. Good. So get your little lights on. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, give it a little shake. The gel pen, you know, takes a second to dry. That's not too bad. Look, have a little look. It looks pretty, you know, pretty good to me. Okay, all right, so then we're going to flip this over. Okay, I am going to totally recommend you use Fast Fuse or glue. Um, the watercolor paper is thick, and it starts to bend a little when we watercolor it. Uh, Fast Fuse is retiring this year because apparently it didn't sell very well. I think only demos were using it because there's a little learning curve, but you may want to order some. 
Um, and no, I wasn't one of those demos that stocked up a ton to sell you a bunch. So you just got to order it. Okay, and then we're going to put that on as straight as it'll go. Okay, next, you need your card base in black, your piece of paper, uh, five and a quarter by four. Okay, and then this is really cool. When you cut the fronts, I don't save them all because I do a lot of classes, but save these little strips. They are awesome for greetings and sentiments, and they're already cut for you, and you just cut them down. Okay, so on this one, I just went with It's Your Day. I was thinking, you know, this could be a wedding card. This could be, hold on, I can't talk and stamp, I think. Oh, good job. Okay, so it could be a wedding card. It could be a birthday card. It could be a congratulations card. If you just want to use it as a note card, just leave it off. Okay, so I'm going to set this on my card front. And again, I'm getting generous with my fast fuse. I pull it and I take it slightly to the side. I'm going generous because it's watercolor paper. And even more generous, it's probably just a hair damp since I'm doing this all like in a... Ooh, in a... Shoot, look at that. Okay, if you do that, go back and try to put some fast fuse where you tore it off with your fingers. Oops, and right there. Okay. So, then I'm just going to center this ish, I'm a big ish, on my card front. Okay, I think that line is kind of where it's going. Alright, so I'm going to put that on. And I'm going to have black on my fingers. I'll have to wash them when I'm done. Okay, and then to get that little, at first I didn't have the little thread, and it was, I mean, it's fine, right? And I'm going to put it lower because I want to be able to see some of that um, on dimensionals. But I, I, I did like the thread. So we have this silver thread. When I do the little spirally thing, I do 16 inches. It's the length of your grid paper. Okay. And so then I'm going to put a little fast fuse right here. And take my thread. Oops. It's always hard to see. So you don't want to pre-cut a bunch of this because it'll get all tangled or you'll lose it. Wrap it around a couple fingers. Kind of undo it, and then I'm going to stick it there. And I got an extra piece here, so you just kind of keep sticking it. Okay, I'm totally happy with that. Flip this over. Let's go a couple. Let's find some dimensionals that have dimensionals on them. Okay, the cool thing about these strips, too, is guess what? A dimensional fits perfectly on that. So I'm going to put, did I do them in the middle? Did I do half ones? I can't tell. I'm just going to put dimensionals all down. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, it's not bad. I made these cards a couple weeks ago because I was out of town last week. So um, the good thing about making the video today is that I'm ready to teach the class tomorrow. Okay, so this is the last part. And I will get this in 25 minutes or less. What do I got? Oh, I got two minutes. Okay. But you know when you rush, you mess up. I'm just saying. All right. So, there's my, oh, I love it. I love it. And I got an extra piece there. I'm not sure if I'm loving that, but I'll take care of that later. Okay, and then I'm going to fast fuse this. Same thing, because I just built up a bunch of stuff. I'm going to give two stripes down here. Okay, get my card front. Sorry, my card base. See if I got it on here. I think I didn't fold that card. All right, and then I'm going to carefully get it on there. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. And there you go. That is how you make a city scene at sunset. Thank you so much for stopping by the Crafty Corner. Give me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know you're watching. And if you do have questions, send them to me, and I will totally help you out. So thank you, and stay crafty.